Hi, I'm Becky Stern, and today we're exploring some easy ways to bring your electronics project online to the Internet of Things. To get started with the Internet of Things, also called IoT, you'll need some Wi-Fi microcontrollers. Two excellent choices are the ESP8266 and the ESP32. These microcontrollers are fantastic for beginners because they're inexpensive and compatible with Arduino-based projects. There's also Arduino's line of Wi-Fi boards and a couple of other platforms worth mentioning, like Particle and Raspberry Pi Pico W. With these little friends, you can easily connect your projects to the web. You'll find these chips on a huge variety of boards. Let's start with something fun, controlling LEDs. One cool project you can try is connecting your LEDs to Cheer Lights, a global RGB LED color sharing platform created by Hans Scharler in 2011. When a new color comes into the system, you can send a new color on Discord, all of the Cheer Lights projects in the world will update to that color. It's a simple concept that makes for a great beginner project. For your LED project to join the global Cheerlights network, it just needs to read from the Cheerlights API, which can be achieved using an Arduino program running on your Wi-Fi microcontroller, as well as several other methods detailed on the Cheerlights site. API stands for Application Programming Interface, and it's basically a set of rules that allow different pieces of software to interact with each other. So when the Cheerlights API updates with a new color, your circuit's program knows how to receive it. WLED is another excellent platform for controlling LED animations over Wi-Fi. This open source code base has been around since 2016 and allows you to manage your lighting display from almost any device. It has a nice user interface on Android and iOS, for example, and several dozen sample effects available. This project is well-maintained with frequent updates and bug fixes. WLED also supports integration with many home automation systems, including Alexa and Home Assistant. Being able to control your LED project from anywhere in the world is a pretty fun experience. But if you want to go further and implement your own more complex project ideas, remember what we covered in a previous episode. It's all about identifying your inputs and your outputs. Some may be analog or digital sensor signals, like in your early Arduino projects, and some may be internet actions, like receiving a tweet or saving data to a Google spreadsheet. Next, let's talk about visualizing and logging sensor data. With cloud services like Arduino Cloud, Adafruit IO, and ThingSpeak, you can easily store, analyze, and visualize your project data for free. For example, if you want to keep an eye on the temperature, you could set up a project to read from a temperature sensor, then send that reading to the cloud on repeat at regular intervals. When you check back in on the cloud service, you'll be able to see a graph of the data over time. You can also set up alerts for different conditions, like if the temperature dips too low or rises too high. Temperature is a good one because you can blow on it to make it higher and you can blow cold canned air at it to make it colder. Each one of these services has a slightly different setup procedure and tutorials you can follow to get started. But the basic idea is that you create a variable to hold your data, and depending on what type it is, like an integer or a string, different dashboard elements will be available to you. Interacting with your own sensor data is fun, and setting up dashboards can be super helpful. But you can also connect your project to a huge collection of web services using the free API gateway called If This Then That, or IFTTT. You can visually code workflows connected to your favorite web services and your existing cloud service using their applet system. For example, if the temperature gets too high, then send me a text message. For some of the services to work, you have to have the IFTTT app installed on your device as well. You can also set up an applet to listen for a webhook callout from your board's code directly, eliminating the cloud data site layer from the equation. The trade-off is that you have to write your own trigger code. For even fewer layers of other people's services, you can work with APIs directly by installing an Arduino API library for your desired product, if there is one. For example, my Slack status updater project uses the Arduino Slack API to update my status according to the position of a rotary switch. The library makes it possible to get authenticated and allows the board to control an app inside Slack. 
And this YouTube subscriber counter uses the Arduino YouTube API library to update the display with my latest numbers. Brian Locke wrote both of these Arduino libraries and a bunch of others you might find useful as well. The examples included with these libraries are great places to start the code for your project. The maker community relies on intrepid contributors like Brian for the building blocks of our projects. Thanks, Brian. It can be a bit of a pain to set up access to some of these APIs directly, and some of them aren't free, which is one of the reasons that IFTTT is so handy. When it comes to connecting your project to the cloud, you have lots of options. Remember that with each layer of abstraction, you may be sacrificing some control about how and when your project connects to the internet. But no matter which method you use, it's important to make sure that your endpoints are secure. You don't want a stranger getting access to or controlling your project. Most cloud services provide good security measures by default, but be sure to never share your login credentials or your private key. I hope you've discovered something new to try by watching this video. I've put some links to some resources in the description. Leave your advice about getting started with IoT in the comments so we can all learn together. Check out the playlist with the rest of the series and subscribe to be sure you don't miss the next one.